Hey guys, welcome to the shop. You know, when you put together the front end of one of these old square bodies, a lot of times you're in for a battle. Why? Because they fit together like absolute garbage. Nothing like the new vehicles. The body lines and stuff on these were just horrible compared to the new stuff. So I got a guest appearance. My brother, my oldest brother, actually, Rick, stopped by to help me assemble the doghouse on this thing, get all of my panels, you know, bolted down to where they're going to be. That way I know what this thing's going to fit together like, and that way I can paint it and be, you know, confident that I don't have to do any further body work and ruin any of the previous work that I've done. So getting these things to fit together can be, can be violent, right? Especially if you want yours to fit together just a little bit better than all the rest. Was he chasing a duck? Oh, goodness, it ran away. Damn ducks. They wouldn't go in because I, I bought an automatic door and then they wouldn't use it. They were scared of it? And they're scared of it. So they won't go in at all. And he was chasing them. He came went under the fence. Ricky went over the fence. Cam came, came back under the fence. <laughs> <laughs> the fence. I said, would you stop chasing We could have a hard thing about books. it. <laughs> that looks better. <laughs> but That's I didn't have Once you get this fender fitted, you can take it off and on. <laughs> yeah. But it's just a, it's, it just needs to either this needs to go in or that one, needs to go out. One or the other. I mean, you could roll, you could hide it good by staying with you work back here and roll that in a little, which is going to help you when the door opens and closes against yeah. the rubbing part. Yeah. And that still rubs the fender. This corner needs to roll. Yeah. It's not bad. No, this it's part you can work. This actually, you can figure this out. Yeah, that just I mean, needs a bead that. welded on it. That's not so, a problem. And I believe I'd, I think I'd put it on the fender because yeah. the fender. Look what a hole they left right there. I know. Like you can take this off. Yeah, I can run that edge lip down. And you can roll that. Put a little. So let's quickly pause for a second, and I want to introduce you to my oldest brother. Rick Summers, and he's the owner of Summers Auto Trim, a custom automotive upholstery shop in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, and he's actually been in business for himself probably about as long as I've been alive, and is one of the more, probably one of the most pickiest individuals I've ever met in my entire life, and to have his help on this is a huge bonus. This guy's first word as a baby, and this is not a joke, was car. He's done many classic restorations of cars and trucks, and he's been here before. So definitely a pleasure to have his help. And uh, have an older brother that does this stuff for a living, you know, it's a bonus. So thank you, Rick. I really appreciate it. Small roll on the edge because your door's right with the rocker. That's as right as you'll get it. Get this fender, this Taiwanese fender, they're, they're crap most of the time. And that'll have to come out quite a bit, actually. I will. I'll have to build that edge up. <laughs> but you need to make sure you get this rounded enough where you don't get no rubbing. Yeah. Because that's where you're going to be mad when you get your pretty on. <laughs> <laughs> when you spray the pretty on. When you spray the pretty, that expensive pretty, you're not going to like it. Man, that's a shame that. that that gap is so bad, and that's just the way it is. And that's the way it is. I mean, it is. It's, it's that way. It's, when I done that little green, that was the last square body that I did. No, that was the last square body that I, no, that wasn't the last one I did. I done that little blue short bed, this, this body stuff. Yeah, I had to do the same thing. So it looks like it's made without that hole right there. Yeah, that 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 doesn't look right. So if I mean if I'm going to be welding on this jam here, there's no reason not to weld there as well, and, and go from this corner and triangulate. Uh, yeah, yeah, make up. it look like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, they're gonna. Yeah, they're gonna. What most people will say is, man, the guy that sprayed that paint done a good job. Yeah. Whoever lined them panels, it looked like. Pretty good, Steve. Really, from here, I mean, the fender is nice. I mean, they're nice. Steve. Yeah, yeah, they, they are, and they're just. And I would rather, the, I would oh. rather go this way than patch in a bunch of rust because of that inner structure in these fenders. They're just a pain. Mm. 
point you do this because you're good at it. I don't know about good at it. Just stick that baby in there and give it a big yank. Yeah. Quack, <laughs> quack. Not very, body work is not pretty. No. Really bad. Is it? Back just there. Right about there. And this body line line up. Let me grab a, some shims. Does that look good at the door? I think the door looks better than the other side. Very nice, huh? I think Compared that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if they can make a fender on the driver's side feel like that, it, it'd be a little better. Where'd you hood it? Uh, it's outside. We'll have to go out and get it. Oh, it'd be nice if we had something we could lay across here. Well, we can have Noel. And Jennifer. Can you guys help us hold these latches up? No. It's fine. It's, we're not going to squash it. Yeah. I'll let you know here shortly. <laughs> Oh, no. I see it. Watch your fingers. Can I take it out? Yeah. Yeah, this thing, this, this truck, I'll, I'll try to finish it by the end of the day. Yeah, those TV shows where they do it in three days, that just does not happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're just, everybody's in the way, yep. Uh, oh, oh, my arm's in here. Yeah, yeah. It won't shut because my arm's in it. Let's see what we got now. Yeah. Oh, what am I? Oh, it's a spring. Yeah. It's pretty dang good. I mean, it's it's. It's it's a little wider than what I if I had a perfect choice, right? I would it needs brought up in this corner a bit. Boop boop. Yeah. Well, you got a right and a left stamp. Yeah. People are building these molds. Yeah, this look how nice this side looks. <coughs> it's just like windows when I'm tinting windows. Yeah. Everybody says, Well, the windows are shaped exactly the same, but they're not. Yeah. Because you tint one window and it'll lay down and you go to the other side. And it won't lay down. You got a heat shrink. Yeah. Because it's got more different. Yeah, so different. It's, it's a right and a left. Look how nice that, that cab cool. line is. That corner. And you go to the other side, and it is it's just crisper, rolled more around. Crisper on out. Ain't yeah. It? Look how look how it comes out. And that's not body job. work. That's that's just the shape of it. They done a better job on this mold. When Maybe I was. You need to make that other side look like this. I can. Yeah. Because it stops way at the corner like yeah. it should. So my old pickup is starting to come back together and it's looking really good. I got my older brother come and help me assemble the front end of this thing. It takes two people and it really takes two people who kind of know what to do and what to look for in order to get one of these together and get the front end square. There's a lot that can go wrong when you're assembling one of these. If your chassis is a little bent, radiator support may be off to one side, even the cab twisted on the frame can make the front end of one of these just an absolute nightmare to put together. And I'm also working with two aftermarket front fenders, one which fit pretty good and then one that didn't fit pretty good. And I want to share with you what I got to do in order to make this fender fit as good as the other one and not be an eyesore when I, when I go to paint this thing. So hopefully this shows up well. Now when you start building the front end of one of these, you start with the driver's door. You get it hung, get it leveled with the rocker, get it fitting all the way around, closing really good. 
get the body or the door lined up with the cab as good as possible and then you start putting on panels after that in relation to this front door. That's just the way I've always been taught and what seems to work really well. Now we hung this aftermarket front fender and we noticed that we got a pretty big gap down here at the bottom. Now that's not the door's fault. This door is right where it was originally. I did put a skin on this door, but this door skin is in exactly the same place as the original. It's just this aftermarket fender is not, it's just not right. So I'm going to have to close this gap up here a bit because otherwise, you know, that's, that's excessive, right? We've got a ton of room down here and then it's great all the way to about there. So I'm going to have to work that door gap there in order to make this this look good but also got another problem up there let me show you that so we're over here on the passenger side of the vehicle and I want you to lock this image into your brain for that panel gap there really nice actually this fender fit together really good right here and I want to take you over to the driver's side and show you how good it fits over there so check out that panel gap I and mean, you could lose a six month old down in there compared to the other side so what I've done is I made a little extension it's just a piece of sheet metal rolled over the edge and that's going to get welded right there and then that'll get filled and worked that's i mean what else do you do do you leave it like that you could but i'm not gonna so this is what i'm gonna have to do in order to get that panel gap to where it's at least halfway decent So see how much nicer that looks? That really does. A little bit of filler there. So check that out. Nothing unnatural looking about that. And you know, you're the only one that's ever gonna know, right? But it's much better like this than it would be, you know, with that gap that you could shove your fingers down in. So it's gonna look good. Once it's primed, look like that fit, like it should. So right here is the worst gap on the whole truck. Now this fender is exactly where it needs to go. It lines up with everything else really good, actually. But from this accent line that runs down the center of the truck, down, man, it just goes south. So, listen, I didn't make this fender. I just opened the box and put it on, and this is what I got. Not surprised, because these are notorious for not fitting. But, you know, I'd rather do this than patch in a bunch of patch panels and, you know, fix a bunch of rust. So, still a better option than uh, fixing, you know, one that's all rotted. What I'm going to do is just dent that area, then all the way up here, start adding metal until I'm happy. Then I can, once I pull this fender back off, I can add a little sport from the backside, fill that, and boom, it's gonna look good. This is what you gotta do if you want nice body lines. So in order to keep this panel from 
getting way too hot. Elizabeth is just going <laughs> to blow some air in there while I, you know, slowly weld on this uh, weld on this gap. Yeah, any, through any one of them holes there. Just give her a little bit of gas. It doesn't. So welding this up took about zero skill, really. You don't have to be some professional welder in order to do this kind of work. It, for one, it does not need to look good. That's not the intended purpose. We're just adding material there. And if you can do this, bzz, 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 then you too can do the work that you see here. As long as it's not, as long as your welder's not set on trailer hitch mode, you know, you set it to the proper thickness of material, you're good to go. So I'm going to grind this down to where none of it is proud, but really it tucked in a bit here, which is perfectly good. And, uh, you know, establish the gap. This will be slightly less than the gap that I want. Then I'll use filler to actually to make the gap. So, boom. Body panel. So here I'm using a little air die grinder with an eighth inch double cut burr and I'm just running up this door gap here to, you know, kind of establish a roundabout eighth inch gap and then I can come back in with some short strand fiberglass and, you know, really, really dial it in. Now the only thing bad about doing it this way is that if you've ever used one of these burrs, you know that all they do is throw off a gazillion little needles that get all in your skin. But like I said, you could open this gap up a hundred different ways, but this is what I chose. It's tough to do that to a new fender. But, you know, if you want them to fit, that's what it takes. We've got three-eighths of an inch of build down here. Yeah, so there you go. You won't knock that off with a shopping cart at Walmart. So now just a little filler and uh, block it out. Be good to go. Just gonna touch up this edge. Uh, let me help me. Let's flip this over real quick. I want to work 
this back edge first. I just want to cover up that work that I did, the welding. Doesn't look bad. Look at that. So there's the back side of the fender that I welded up. You can see down here, probably in one spot, probably about a half inch. So quite a bit of material I had to add there to make that gap right. Oh, and all I'm going to do is skim that just so, you know, cover up the metal, make it look like it wasn't messed with, maybe. Are you ready, love? This won't be enough, but it'll be enough to cut that fender in a little bit. Well, I just poured that right in there without the funnel. Hopefully there's no chunks in it. We'll find out. So, I'm going to kind of stand back, but just go along the edges. Huh? Yeah, bend down, yeah. And aim it right at the edge, you know, six inches, and keep moving. <laughs> You're right, go ahead. Just watch that wet edge and keep it wet. All right, now just go on. Don't worry about the spots that are thin. It's okay, we'll, go, we'll come back to it. We don't want it to, we don't want to run it. Hit, wait, wait this edge and then go around this wheel well. You're gonna do fine. Let me get back. Go ahead. Don't stop like that. All right. When you, when you, listen, when you go over a spot and you, and you may move too quick, don't keep the trigger held and then run back because you actually put like three or four coats on one spot. You know, what you do is you come back in a little bit and you, and you get it. Just go ahead and, and keep working from what you just sprayed and just keep working up from, and going from one end of the fender to the other. You can, just watch your hose and your pant legs and all that stuff.
So check out how nice that looks. That's that black Speedy Coat T-Rex epoxy primer, 120, 130 bucks a gallon. And that is a real option as far as a quick, easy paint job for somebody who wants to get their ride all in one color and protect it, maybe until they get the time or whatever to you know, do a, a custom paint job like they want. Man, some people are doing that and it looks pretty good. Check out how nice that finish is. I mean, it's, you know, there's no gloss to that. It's just nice satin finish, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. So you can get this stuff in white, I think as well. And I'm not for sure if you could tend it or not, but there are people out there who are spraying their whole rides in this stuff. And, you know, in certain circumstances, it looks pretty dang good. So if you want to just get your vehicle in one color on the cheap, you know, that epoxy primer, you know, is definitely a, a real option. So I just did this to protect these fenders on the backside and you know, give them a little more protection than what that uh, shipping, uh, whatever coating that was on this offered. So that looks good. I really like that. So I've got the fender outside, all the body work's been done on it, and it's been sprayed with the urethane primer and block sanded. And this thing, I mean, it's slick. It's slick as it was before I ever took a three pound sledge, block of wood, welder to the edge of this thing to make it fit. It, it looks really nice. It doesn't have a ton of body filler in it or anything, but it's got as much as it needs and no more than that. I know body filler gets a bad name, and I had said, I think previously, that all body work's done like this. Every car you see at SEMA, you know, all these big car shows, I said they're all done like this, and that's not true. You know, I was exaggerating there. There are people who get their vehicles done, their repairs done, all in sheet metal. They pay a you know, skilled craftsman to use a shrinker, stretcher, English wheel, metal files to make those panels and hammer and dolly. Those guys are awesome, but they're also very expensive, and that's a very time-consuming way to, to repair a panel. And trust me, this is not that truck, so body filler it is, and it looks really good. You know, there's nothing wrong with the repair that I did. That will last, I mean, last as long as the truck if you take care of it. So, this looks slick, and that water just gives me a good... It gives me a good image of what it'll look like once it gets paint on it, you know, and gets some shine on it. So, there we go. Wet check complete. This fender is done. Say hello. So the front of the truck's all test fit. Body lines are pretty good. Actually, they're probably better than they were factory. Could I make them better than they are now? Yes. Am I going to? No. The return on investment there is pretty low, and I don't feel like spending another three days for 16th of an inch adjustments on, on body lines to make them perfect. This is good enough, and we're just gonna call it, call it here. So what I do wanna do is add a fluid reservoir tank for my windshield washer tank. I want to add a tank for my windshield washer fluid. It used to have one on it made of plastic, but everything that was on this that was made of plastic died about 10 years ago. So I don't have that anymore, but I do have a nice little tank over here that matches the one that I have for my antifreeze overflow. And I think it'll look really good mounted to the inside of this driver's side fender. But we got to do a little modification to it first before, before it's going to fit. So let's go over here, modify this tank, and then see if we can't get it mounted up under the, uh, up under the hood there. So here's the tank that I'm going to be using, picked up off Amazon, sent to me by a viewer actually. Same tank that I've got for my engine coolant overflow, except for it is polished aluminum, where this one's just black powder coated. Really nice tanks actually. Got a little level, a little level sight there. I took the plug out of the bottom. I'm going to drill that hole out a little more. Take this pump. This is a windshield washer fluid pump and 
plop it in that hole, mount this to the side of the fender, and we should have a good usable reservoir. This truck's never had one of those since I've owned it, so that'll be a change. Plus, it'll actually look pretty good, in my opinion. So I've just got a step bed here, and all I'm going to do is open up this hole. I think i got to open up to about three quarters of an inch, but I'll stop and test fit as I go. That way I don't over bore this hole. But I'm just going to hand, hand drill this thing. Maybe three quarter. That may work. We'll put a little bit of a little bit of lube on that thing. A little bit of a little bit of dielectric grease. How about that? it. That's good. That should fit and not leak. Excellent. Here, and it's got to be got to be below this lip here, or else the lid may <clears throat> hit the hood. But in order to get it that low, really need to trim back that that ear there, so it doesn't hit that inner fender well. So there's the inner part of that fender. I added a half inch of weld to that. You know, just finished it out. It doesn't even look like it's ever been touched. And I did sand this edge a little through the through the black epoxy or through the black urethane there. So you know, I touched that up. I just missed a couple little spots. So we'll hit that again and you won't see it. It looked pretty good. Let's see if we can't get this jug mounted.
get it. Of course, my camera would cut off. As soon as I start doing this. But anyway, you get the idea. This just squeezes that little nutted insert into that hole. And now I've got, well, that's all I put in there is two. Because that's all I need. Could have went a little a little more extreme and put more in there, but I think that's going to be plenty. I just don't have a really good way to, to bolt it down other than a couple spots, and that's plenty. All right, so I'm just using some stainless steel quarter 20 hardware. And the good thing about this tank, or the good thing about the pump, is that it plugs right into the factory plug. So I can just plop that in, hose that up to the actual window washer spray nozzles boom we actually have we will have a functioning my fingers will actually get in there and do that watch me drop it a functioning window washer unit which is nice so there's a little better shot the polished aluminum ones for the radiator overflow and like I mentioned this one's for the windshield washer fluid I like these aluminum tanks definitely like them better than the plastic jugs that this truck originally came with I think that that looks pretty good so the passenger side of this truck passenger side fender right out of the box you could have installed this fender with these two tools and it really would have been good enough now I did chose I did chose choose to add a little bit of filler glass to this edge right down here at the bottom just to tighten it up to where it was even you know up and down but really you could have got away with this now let me show you what it took for me to get it just a halfway decent fit like this side on the driver's side of this thing so here's a large portion but not all of the tools that I used to get a decent panel gap on the driver's side front fender nothing out of the ordinary I remember this 20 years ago working with my brother fitting these trucks together aftermarket vendors a lot of times just don't fit and my brother Rick that was here helping me big thanks to him by the way helping me square the front end of this truck up he's the one that told me don't touch those front fenders that you bought and body work wise until you make sure that they fit because the chances are that you're going to be using a block of wood sledgehammer pry bar maybe welder and he was right <laughs> uh, but they fit now three days later So I cannot tell you how happy I am. I can't express it in words to have all of the major bodywork on this thing behind me. Now I grew up in a bodywork in the bodywork field kind of and I knew what I was getting into, but goodness, it is a ton of work to bring something like this back around. And just to a point that I have, a lot of people go a lot farther than this, but uh, a lot of projects get stopped right in the middle of the in the bodywork stages people get them to where they're mechanically sound then they give up you see them driving them down the road in primer and there is a reason for that because it is a ton of effort and it's easy to underestimate how much is involved so that fender it kind of fought me the other one went well i was definitely glad to have my brother's help and i am glad to be getting this thing to a point to where it's ready for paint so we still got the tailgate to do and a couple spots to touch up but all the major stuff is done. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers. I couldn't have done it without any of you guys. You guys are awesome. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.